Initiatives like the uh, Nature Conservancy and the Urban Forest tell us that trees are important for the overall health of a community. The Urban Forest is part of the Venice Beautification Project. And these projects create awareness to a large group of people how important trees are for uh, the overall, for our health as humans. Not only do they provide shade and oxygen, they transform carbon, they also, in the case of the urban forest in Venice, filter the runoff that comes from the industrial park going into the bay and thus creating coastal resilience. It's along the canal, this area is along the canal, the urban forest is, and it's not only a, a green space, but it's also a buffer zone. The speaker that comes behind, after me, Greg Vine, will talk a lot more about the details of this project and how it came about and where they want to go into the future. I'm saying there's much more to it than meets the eye. Nature is there to be admired. Most of you know I'm a painter. And I came to this area through the Minnesota Beach Club. I'm going to take you with me looking at nature through the eyes of a painter because it needs to be seen as we artists see it. I came um, to the Minnesota Beach Club, as I said, when I was living in Miami. And what I was doing for a living at that time was creating murals. And the murals that I was creating is a special kind of mural. And I want to share this with you. I need to do a screen share, so bear with me. And we're here. And we're here. I was creating murals like this. It's called the trompe l'oeil. It means, and it comes from the French verb se trompe, meaning mistake, making a mistake. The eye make, makes a mistake. There is something that, that's not there. It's an illusion. And to create open space, to create a view, basically, you use a landscape and depth to create this illusion. Now, this was really a dirt pit. The, before I came, there was the walls were mildewed, there were garbage cans, there was dirt, dirt on the floor. It was really bad. And this is what you can do with paint. And remember this because the Venice Beautification Project is also about murals and I would like to combine the two. I came to the Minnesota Beach Club um, in 1999, as I said, to study nature because because of those murals, it has to be very, very realistically painted. Otherwise, the eye would not believe it. Then it would immediately see, oh, that's a painting. But by studying nature and being in nature, being at the Minnesota Beach Club, I completely fell in love with nature and I realized how important it is to lift all our spirits, it's not only me, but all our spirits. If the sun hits a leaf or a tree in a certain way, then that makes me happy, that lifts my spirit. And that's the art of landscape painting. The art of landscape painting is actually to uh, convey the, the majesty of the ever-changing earth upon a never-changing piece of paper or canvas. And it brings order, like the order of architecture into a painting. And it, this, the, the, the negative space is like the silence between the notes of music and all that you can see in a landscape painting. And if I can explain this a little bit better later, I definitely will. I studied nature and I brought it back to Miami to work on my murals. And that's how I fell in love with it. Every, every summers, summer, I would come here with a stack of books and magazines 
and study how to mix colors, how to create depth, uh, how to do all this, because I didn't know. During my studies of all these methods and ways of doing things, I also found two very important painters that came here before me, 100 years before me. And I guess you know who this is. This is Winslow Homer. Winslow Homer loved Florida. Winslow Homer is a famous American painter who was born in Boston at, on uh, 1836 and died in uh, 1904. He was very meticulous and strong. It looks like there's a lot of simplicity with the picture, with the people around it, but all it is is about human struggle against the forces of the unrelentless universe. Winslow Homer traveled uh, to many places, but if I show this, everybody knows who I'm, whom I'm talking about. And, and most of his paintings are about the human struggle against the natural forces, like this painting really conveys. When he was working in his studio, they, the paintings became, and that was 1880, became darker and darker. And, and he really wanted to capture this struggle. His, his earlier paintings were a little bit lighter and brighter, but he, he let go and he actually became a, a complete hermit. He did not show himself anymore. Before that, he came a lot to Florida. And here's this one where you can see the bright colors, the, the, the love for the environment that Winslow Homer had, and he loved to hang out here. This is a, a watercolor from which I can tell what I was talking about earlier. The, this shows the architecture, the order of the architecture of the trees, how nature already has that in place. There's a rhythm in it. And the space between the trees is what I was referring to as the silence between the notes of music. The canopy you can see as a roof. That's, that's what I mean with architecture. And Homer was a master at this. Another painter that I really admired a lot for many reasons is Martin Johnson Heed. He is known for his marshlands, his paintings of marshlands. He was born in Pennsylvania in 1819. So it was almost a contemporary of Homer, a little bit younger. And he died in St. Augustine in Florida in 1910. He's not as famous. He Well, he was not as famous as Homer during his lifetime. And I think this is because he traveled so much, but he be became famous afterwards. There's an interesting story though, because he was part of the itinerary art artist project. And this was something that Jim Mott, a landscape painter in New York uh, came up with. Uh, he thought that artists, the spheres of art and daily life were actually disconnected. And, and to the disempoverishment of both. And he thought it would be good that the artist would go into the community. And he had a whole list of hosts throughout the United States where artists could travel to by car and then stay two to five days at one spot, paint there, bring their um, artistic practice to the place and then leave one or two paintings behind as a form of payment. This was also because he believed in a gift society. He thought that money, although we all need it, was actually interfering with the imagination of the artist. Art and imagination does not go well with money. 
that was his convic conviction. So the gift society was also to give the artists a way to travel without having to pay for lodging. They still have to pay for travel. It still probably was pretty expensive, but this was what he came up with. And Martin Johnson, he loved this. He traveled the whole United States and many of his paintings showed up later in garage sales because the host did not know that he was such an important painter. And the people who did recognize it could get thousands of dollars for seemingly unimportant work. He's known for his tropical paintings and depiction of exotic birds and flowers. Not only did he travel a lot in the United States, he also traveled to Brazil, Colombia, Panama, Nicaragua, and uh, Jamaica. And he, he had this atmospheric, dreamlike, romantic idea of the tropics. Like all paintings of recent history, they convey an intimate connection linking humankind, history and nature together. And that is what painters of today also do. It is important that those three are in balance. And now we're going to the day of today where Bill Farnsworth is painting at the Minnesota Beach Club or the Minnesota Key, and also is linking humankind, history and nature together. And there's a feeling of intimacy. When you look through the eye of a painter, you are in an observant mode. You really look at the world from a distance and it elevate, uh, alleviates your worries and, and everything that daily life clogs us up so much. This gives happiness. And if you have never tried to draw, drawing is one of the best ways to connect to nature. It's a simple tool. You only need a pencil and a piece of paper. And now you're going to learn about the architecture of a landscape and the rhythm between the trees. And while you're doing this, you will feel elevated in your spirit. I can assure you that. If you've never drawn before and you would like to try it, please, please get a hold of me. I have great tools to help you to get into it and connect or reconnect to nature. This is a drawing also at the Minnesota Beach Club. Actually, it's a composition of five different scenes. And this was the, at the base of a really big painting that people wanted to have so they could take a piece of the Minnesota Beach Club with them. Um, the urban forest, as I said before, is a part of the Venice beautification project and the murals are a part of it as well. And I would love to see them both linked because instead of breaking building that buildings down that are in the way, that are ugly or are in the way, or we like to see more landscape, that is what you could create with paint. And on a critical note, I have to say that instead of bulldozing huge amounts of trees, I really would urge anybody who is in power to do this, to not recreate the forest later because to recreate the forest takes a long, long time. I'm not against buildings. I love buildings, but why not integrate both from the start? Trees take a long time to grow. You cannot build those in a day. And to integrate them both, for me, that is what uh, the health of a beautification of an, a, a city or a village or whatnot means. Here, I want to show you this picture. The, the tree that you see casting a shadow makes this whole corner actually very alive. It comes alive by the changing sun. This is also part in Venice, and this is what I mean. 
beauty is there. It's integrated and it's alive. Now I'm going to give the microphone to Greg Vine, who's going to tell you all the details about the urban forest and where it is. Greg, take it away. Jacobina, I want to thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, join your very prestigious uh, speaking group here uh, with the Minnesota Beach Club Speaker Series. And you hit it on the head with the concept of art and nature working together and being uh, the inspirational for, uh, inspiration for a lot of us to do a lot of things, both for humankind and for nature. And I will tell you, if it wasn't for the artists in our community, the urban forest, would not have grabbed the footing that it did and gotten the accolades that we are getting. Uh, but for uh, several artists, but one in particular comes to the top, and that is uh, Mr. Bill Farnsworth. I think you mentioned him in your presentation. And he did a wonderful rendering for us or a wonderful uh, scene of, of oak trees for us that was used to carry through the community the message of this is what we're building this is what it's going to look like 50 to 100 years and two and 300 years from now so it served a great purpose and it still does it's the mural on the side of our work trailer it's the mural on the banners that we carry around town so thank you to bill farnsworth and all the other artists yourself included that helped to sustain and grow literally grow the urban forest uh, we have a group of plein air artists that come to our, our, our forest twice a year now, and they're documenting as we go and, and painting scenes. And it's so interesting to watch how a dozen or more individuals will paint certainly more than a dozen different vignettes of the same scene. So everybody's eye and everybody's personality and everybody's emotion grab something different out of nature. So that makes me proud to be providing this wonderful resource for the community of Venice. And when I say I, uh, I'm the chairman of the Urban Forest Committee. Uh, we are a committee of VABI, Venice Area Beautification Inc. Venice Area Beautification Inc. is a 501c3 corporation, which means you can donate money and talk to your CPA and accountant and take your tax deductions appropriately. And that organization was started back in uh, 1989. And they've done a multitude of things across the way, of which I'm still a board member and a committee chairman. But if you just take a look at this, I'm not going to give you the bullet points because there's a couple of them that I want to talk about. But we realized a few years ago that it was out of date and we had uh, our graphics people update it. And I'm just now looking and I'm seeing we're already at 2019. We're already two years out of date again. So we need to update it yet more, which you're going to see some you know, video footage and so on in a moment. But what VABI is doing for the community and what's led us to the urban forest was VABI's claim to fame, if you will, is we created the Venetian Waterway Park. That's the trail along the intercoastal waterway, both on the island side and on the mainland side along the intercoastal waterway. And it's about 10 miles long, five miles on each side. And it's been a raging success. It took us many, many years to raise the funds and complete about $5.1 million. And today it's hundreds of thousands of users annually on that trail. So we're pretty proud of that. But we also do a lot of other things. People come to Venice and they go downtown and what a beautiful town it is and how, how nice it is to live here and all the beautiful comments we get from people. But if you see the hanging baskets and you see the pottery with all the flowers and the foliage in them, and you see the little vignettes here and there around town of little gardens and lots of plantings, and that is the Bloom team led by Mr. Bob Benner in our community. And the, it's self-evident. You see, it's just beautiful and it's gorgeous. And, and that's a committee of VABI, the Bloom team. Uh, the other is around town, you'll see a number of murals, not all murals, but the predominance of the murals around town are uh, created and overseen by the Public Art Committee uh, with VABI. We have uh, an art committee that uh, does a lot of work. They do statuary around town. You see the three muses, the lions, and different you know, things around the community. That, ladies and gentlemen, is VABI. And that's a committee of VABI, public art. Another big one is, as you see the guys and gals running around town with the screaming yellow shirts on with, with red blazes on them, and it says KVB, Keep Venice Beautiful. Again, that's VABI. They are VABI. They are what make VABI. And that's 40 people, plus the, more than 40 people, but it's 40 people that show up on Thursdays to run around the community and identify areas that need Brazilian peppers removed, exotic plants removed, 
some general TLC touching up and sprucing, mulching, et cetera, in cooperation with the Public Works Department of the City of Venice. So they are, again, that's VABI. That's an, so all of this is a nonprofit organization providing an above and beyond level of expectation of quality of life here in Venice. So I'm very proud of VABI and being And then sometimes if you'd like to come see us, please go to uh, VeniceUrbanForest.com and you can learn all about it or VABI.org and learn all about us. I'm going to stop this screen share because I want to move on to a video screen here in a moment and see if I can do this seamlessly. I've been having some technical issues with my fingers here. Bear with me while I'm setting this up. But we've been a busy group. Vabby has been a busy group and we're always looking for more volunteers, more community uh, members and activities, etc. And would welcome any and all of you to come and help us to build the forest. Saturdays is a big work day in the forest early in the morning for a couple, three hours. We're currently removing a lot of Brazilian peppers. It's a body of work. And we're also always looking for, and you'll never hear me stop asking for money. So let me get this video running. And this is going to show you where the forest is. At least hope it does. And I'm hoping the sound is coming through. Um, are you hearing the sound, Jacobina? Yes, sound is on, right? Great. Greg Vine, the chairman of VABI, Venice Area Beautification Inc.'s Urban Forest Committee. And we're the people bringing you the new urban forest here in Venice, Florida, a wonderful place to live, work, and play. Our committee is dedicated to creating a new and vibrant wildlife restoration habitat zone here in Florida, approximately one and three quarter miles long. What you're looking at right now to your left is the Venetian Waterway Park, the concrete ribbon there along the intercoastal waterway. And from there over to the back sides of the industrial buildings on your right will be all newly planted large scale urban forest trees and glades and glens and ecotones for where wildlife can interface with the forest. It is gonna be a wonderful and dynamic process. Hopefully you will all become involved and I can tell you more about it. It's Greg Vine with the Venetian area urban forest. What you're seeing to your left there now is now full of trees, a couple thousand trees and understory plantings and butterfly gardens a bunch. Our waterfront urban forest will be a bird watching and wildlife viewing paradise easily accessed from the Venetian Waterway Park and the trail systems located here in the Greater Venice area. We're working on a new drone video showing the forest in its current state, which is a dramatic improvement from what you're looking at now. All that green space to your left, green grasses, now trees and glades and glens, and it's pretty awesome.
Just imagine our grandchildren walking their grandchildren in the forests that we're planting today. If you will, just imagine walking with your grandkids down there and enjoying that. But that rendering was painted by Mr. Bill Farnsworth. And that helped to sell this project in so many ways that you can only imagine. And this is a static, there's no music or sound on this. I'll just talk while this is playing in the background for you to watch. But if you look to the left, that's a before picture, or actually we just started making the pathway. And then the one to the right was about a month or two into the project, and it shows you the, the rapid transformation of the area. But uh, this all could not happen without the volunteers, the donors, and the community members that came out in force to support and create this urban forest. It's literally hundreds and hundreds of volunteers, literally thousands, actually tens of thousands of person hours creating this forest. And some of the trees have been donated, some of the trees have been purchased, and they all have to get put into ground. And the, you're looking at some of the volunteers here. These are young Marines from the Venice Middle School that signed up for the program, and they're over there every Saturday morning helping do tasks and jobs for about three hours. And they're all gaining their, uh, their service hours for public service for graduation credits and so on. And they're there for that, but they're also there because they are now learning about the birds and the bees and the wildlife, and it's awesome. Uh, we had a grand opening ribbon cutting that was just one great big huge party. The press and the television crews from across the land were there. We were on TV a number of times and loved the fact that the young people were there and the young people are having a good time with learning about creating an urban forest. And for me, why the urban forest is so important is we're losing places for the wildlife to have a habitat. This was a damaged area. This was the railroad corridor running south from the train depot all the way down the center road, down by Big Boy Toys. And, you know, it was stripped bare. It was a railroad corridor, and it became completely overgrown and invaded with invasive species of uh, pe Brazilian pepper trees, lead trees, and many other things, all of which have to be removed and taken away, which is what we do all the time there, getting it cleaned up and ready for planting of new native trees. All the trees coming into this project have to be fully native and not only native but native exactly to our coastal zone that we're in here and creating a, a buffer for storm damage and so on calling this coastal resiliency that you heard Jacobina mention. This is our board of directors and you may recognize some of the folks here. This is the Urban Forest Committee of VABI. So VABI is a pretty robust organization and we're always constantly raising money and looking for volunteers. So you can always go to uh, VeniceUrbanForest.com and please click on the donate button. If nothing else, give us a few bucks or give us lots of bucks, whatever you This is a butterfly garden that was in the beginning. Now, when I have a new updated version of this, you'll see the butterflies just in mass here by the, by the thousands. Uh, this last couple of months, we've had literally many thousands of the white sulfur butterflies doing their thing. They have moved in, and uh, Gulf Fritillary here on your left uh, are moving in, and the birds and the bees are moving in. The Audubon Society did a baseline count uh, back when we started this whole project, and they had about 12 species of birds that they could count in that barren land. Today, we're at over 85 individual species of birds uh, identified by the Audubon professional counters. We even have a team that come down from Cornell University uh, once a year to, to do a count, and they add that on to what's called eBird.com, and that's a whole other learning curve. We can talk about that separately someday, the eBird.com. And so the birds are moving in. The wildlife is moving in. We've had the wild turkeys there last year, and they were there specifically because they liked the certain kind of berries that were on some plants that we had planted, and that's what attracted them there. So very diverse. We even have a family of bobcats on the site. Uh, we've identified them and saw them a number of times, a mama and her two cubs. Uh, just this last weekend, we found and identified a burrowing owl on site. So that took us from 84 species to 85 species in the forest that is actually living there. And when we plant trees, we plant trees. These are big, full-scale pine trees, big, full-scale oak trees. And they don't weigh just a pound or two. They weigh a lot. This gentleman is Phil Ellis, and he's giving away one of the tools that he found along the railroad corridor. He's our project supervisor and manager, 100% volunteer dude. And 
wouldn't happen without people like Phil Ellis and others. Uh, it takes a lot of work to get this done. A lot of people, a lot of commitment, a lot of funds. And I would just ask you to please, please look at that barren spot you're looking at now. And now picture that full of literally, you know, 30 foot tall, 10 inch caliper and bigger oak trees, pine trees and other native trees and species. It's, it's awesome. It's very gratifying to be a part of this and I'm glad to be the leader of it, but it's the community that's doing this. Uh, good things take time and we've been at all of this Vabby stuff for a little over 32 years running now. Uh, so that's a pretty good testament to an organization worthy of coming along and helping us out if you have the mind to. So.